All right, so we're going to do our quiz review. This is your quiz review. It looks like this at the top. This is a part of your notebook check. Um, your notebook check, I believe, is the 3rd of December, unless, you know, life happens. But um, this is a part of it, so make sure you fill in. I'm not going to do these first four because these are literally word for word from the textbook. So you can find them there. We're going to move on to this section. Um, we're going to label each picture as either a perpendicular bisector, an angle bisector, a median, or an altitude. So we're going to go through the list. Um, this is what it'll, uh, there will be a section of this on your quiz. So that's why. Um, we could just go in order, try to find one of each. The perpendicular bisector is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. So perpendicular means intersects and forms 90 uh, degrees and then bisector means um, in the middle of the line you know like the midpoint so we're gonna look um, to see in each picture in the first one do we see a 90 degree angle we don't so we can just move on in the second picture I do see a 90 degree angle um, but it needs to be in the middle of the line so do we think that the perpendicular segment is at the middle of this side of the triangle. I don't think so, so we're going to keep moving. The next one, again, I don't see a right angle. And then the last one, um, I do. I see a segment with a right angle. I know that it's in the middle of the line because of these two dashes, which means AF and F whatever, FB, are going to be congruent. So that means F is in the dead center. So this is a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. The next one is an angle bisector. Um, so this is where we look, it cuts an angle in half. Cuts an angle in half. So we want to look. Um, we got this segment. Um, it looks like it cuts an angle in half. I know that this angle is congruent to this one, so this is an angle bisector. That was easy. The next one is a median. A median goes from a midpoint to the vertex. Midpoint to vertex. Um, so we're going to look at this picture. Again, it goes from a vertex, but it does not look like that is the midpoint. So it's not a median. Um, from vertex to a midpoint, this does look like a midpoint because of the congruent symbols. That means E is in the dead center. So this would be called a median. So then obviously you can do process of elimination. This would be an altitude. An altitude goes from a vertex um, perpendicularly to the opposite side. That's all. So those are our four. We're going to keep on keeping on. Do some math. Uh, perpendicular bisector. The property. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. The Okay, so perpendicular bisectors form circumcenters. So go ahead and write that in. So form circumcenters. You will need to know that. It will literally ask you, point blank. Um, so the mathematical property of circumcenters is that from the circumcenter, circumcenter to the angles is equidistant. Circumcenter to angles is equidistant. So the perpendicular bisectors of ABC intersect at point G. So that means this is our circumcenter. Find the indicated measure. So it means from the circumcenter to the angles, which I'll highlight in this blue color, are going to be congruent. So we want to find the length of BG which is from the circumcenter to the angle. So we just need to look at the others. 
It's going to be congruent to AG, so it's going to be 9. This next one, we have GA. So again, from the circumcenter to the angles is congruent. So GA will be congruent to 11. Uh, P is the circumcenter of XYZ. Use the information to find PZ. So we want to find PZ. That's our question. We are given PX, which is, what is it, 3X plus 2. We are also given PY, which is 4X minus 8. So we know all of these are equal because it's a circumcenter, so from the center to the angles are all congruent. So I'm going to find x, plug it into either of the line segments, because whatever these segments are, pz will be the same. So I'm going to set them equal, because px equals py. So the length of px is 3x plus 2. The length of py is 4x minus 8. Move my smaller x. 2 equals x minus 8. My last step is to add 8. So x equals 10. Again, I could plug it into either place, and that would help me find pz. I'm just going to plug it in up here, because why not? So we got 3 times 10, which is 30, plus 2 is 32. You could do the same thing over here if you wanted to triple check. So you would do 4 times 10 minus 8. 4 times 10 is 40, minus 8 is 32. So PZ equals 32. All right, here we've got two perpendicular bisectors. Um, so in a perpendicular bisector, We only have one perpendicular bisector in this triangle-ish. Um, so from the point on the bisector, so here's my bisector. So from the point on the bisector to my endpoints is congruent. So it says find the length of CD. I know CD is congruent to AD, so it's going to be 27. Here, I'm going to highlight my perpendicular bisector again. It means it cuts this line in half, so these two pieces are the same. So if PQ is 5, QR is 5, so PR equals 10. We've got an angle bisector. Angle bisectors um, form an in-center. And from the in-center to the sides is equidistant. So from the in-center to the sides is equidistant. So it says the angle bisectors of triangle ABC intersect at point P. Um, find the indicated measure. So we're finding PB. Let me highlight it in a better color. PB is from the in center to the side, so it's going to be congruent from the in center to side, in center to the side. So PB will be the same length as PC, which is 9. Find HP. I didn't scroll down enough. Let me see if I can see this mamma jamma. All right, here it is. Okay. Um, 
So HP is again from the in center to the side, in center to side, in center to side. Uh, the reason I was worried is I can't see. I didn't scroll down enough. But you can see on your paper this is a 15. So that means if PK is 15, that means HP is also 15. N is the in center of triangle ABC. Um, using uh, given information, words, to find the indicated measure. So it says NK, NK is 2X minus 2. And then it says NL is negative X plus 10. And then it says find NM. So again, all of these are all congruent because they're from the in center to the side. So I'm going to set equal NK and NL um, so that I can find X and plug it back in. So 2X minus 2 equals a negative X plus 10. Um, always move the smaller X, which here would be negative X. So I'm going to add X. So I'll have 3X minus 2 equals 10. Add the 2. 3x equals 12, so then of course x equals 4. So, um, I want to find the length of nm. I could plug it into either of the other lines and they would tell me. I'm going to plug it into both just to kind of check. Oop. So plug in for x, 2 times 8, sorry, 2 times 4 is 8, minus 2 is 6. Negative 4 plus 10 is still 6. So nm, which is the same length as the others, will also be 6. We've got these last two on this page. Um, these are angle bisector pictures. So angle bisectors. This is from 6.1. It says find the measure of A, B, C. So these are angle bisectors because from my point to my, a, my rays of my angles, they're congruent. So because of that, I know my angle is bisected. So if the right half is 56, the left half is also 56. So the measure of A, B, C, I'll add 56 and 56 which makes 112 degrees. All right, and then the last one, we have two congruent angles, which means from the point on the angle bisector to the sides, they're going to be congruent. So I'm going to say 4x equals 2x plus 12. Subtract 2x. 2x equals 12, divide by 2, and x equals 6. So the final length of jm, you'll do 4 times 6, which is 24. Again, you can check on the other side as well, just to make sure the length is 24. The last page, we've made it. Medians. So medians. Um, where they intersect. Um, so they form a centroid. So that's important. So they form a centroid. Um, from the centroid, So from the centroid to the vertex, is two thirds of the line.
So it'll be broken up into, so this would be the vertex, this would be the centroid, this would be the midpoint. So this would be the two-thirds of the line, which means from the centroid to the midpoint is one-third of the line. So we have point P is a centroid. Find the following. So we're going to find P, N, which again, I did not scroll down far enough. I'll fill in. P, N, um, and then we're going to find P, Q. We're given Q, N. So QN is the full length of the line, which is 30. I've always said it's easier to find the one-third. So one-third of 30. You can take 30 and divide by 3, and that'll help you. One-third of 30 is 10, so QP is 10. To find the length of the two-thirds, you double the one-third. So PN is 20. I'll have to scroll down for this one. Um, point D is the centroid of triangle ABC. Find the following measures. So we have DE is 9. Whoops. DE is 9. Um, you need to ask yourself, is this the one-third, the two-thirds, or the whole line? It is obviously the one-third. So the best thing to do is find the two-thirds. So you're going to double it. So that means DC is 18. To find the length of the whole line, you can add them together. 9 plus 18 is 27. So it works out because if the whole line was 27, 27 divided by 3 does give us the 1 third. Um, and it all works out. We have one last section. Let's see if I can fit it all on the screen. Yep. Okay. Point G is the centroid of triangle ABC. We have BG is 6, AF is 12, AE is 15. Find the length of each segment. So find the length of BF. BF is the full length of the line. We need to look at um, what we're given. We're given BG. Is this the one-third, the two-thirds, or the whole line? This is the two-thirds. What would be easy is to find the one-third. So you need to think about this. If we double to find the two-thirds, the opposite of doubling will be dividing by two. So the one-third, you're going to take six and divide it by two. Okay, divide it by two, and you'll get the number three. So the full length of the line will be 6 plus 3, which is 9. So BF is 9. Okay, so you can always check this by doing the 1 third. 1 third of 9 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. So all of those work out. We're going to find FC. This is actually the most commonly missed question right here. This is the side of the triangle. It, it does not deal with the one-third of the two-thirds. Keep in mind that a, a median goes from a vertex to the opposite midpoint. So if F is the midpoint, these two are congruent. So the length of FC is going to be 12. So if FC is 12, then AC is the whole length of the line is 24. The next one says find the length of GC, um, but this is actually a mistake. There's no information on this line at all. None on the line, none in the information. Um, this 6 goes with BG, which is not the same as this line. So it won't happen on the quiz. This is because I make mistakes. Um, the quiz is not made by me, so there are no mistakes. Uh, this one's not possible. There's not enough information.
You won't write this on the quiz. If you do, you will be automatically wrong. I'm just throwing it out there. Keep that in mind. This next one, AG. It appears as though there's no information, but there actually is. If you read the directions, it says AE is 15. So the full length of the line is 15. It's easy to find the 1 third by dividing by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So to find the 2 thirds, you're going to double 5, which is 10. So AG is 10, and we also just found GE, which is 5. Um, you need to go back and make sure you do all of the terms in the front of the page or the front of the quiz review um, because they will be on the quiz. The quiz is, quiz is heavy on um, these terms. Okay.